Hey everyone, welcome back to part 3 in my FontForge Masterclass series. If you haven't already seen part 1 and 2, I would highly recommend you go watch those first. I will leave a link in the description to every part in this series, and I'll put a card up in the corner to part 1. Now in today's video, we're covering kerning. Now I just have a simple test file here open in FontForge with just a couple of characters. Now all of the spacing is already set up, as you can see the spacing for each of the letters. Now if I go into a new metrics window, if I type multiple A's, you can see the spacing is just fine. Or multiple T's, the spacing is just fine. Or T and then F. Anything like that works just fine. But if I write something like T, A, the spacing is quite wide. Or, for instance, F, O. You can see the spacing here is quite strange. If I go ahead and open the F character and adjust that to try and make that work, if I go back to my metrics window, It'll turn out that FO will look just fine, but if I put capital T, uh, F, capital T, you can see that they're intersecting. So we can't really do that. That's not an option. We really have to keep the spacing like this. So how do we fix this? And that's where kerning comes in. Kerning is basically the pairing up of two characters and then adjusting the spacing for those two characters. So we'll find this in the element font info here down here in lookups and gpos. We're gonna add a lookup and you can see here if we tr choose a type of pair position kerning and the feature of kern and it will automatically make a lookup name which is just fine and we click OK. Then we have something to put our table of uh, kerning information in. So now we're gonna add a subtable to that. Uh, the subtable name that is generated automatically is just fine. Now we have this kerning format page where we can choose the starting characters and the ending characters and we can use individual kerning pairs which is what we're going to cover here or something more advanced is a class. Now we have here this default separation for the auto kerning so if you want to you can automatically kern every character um, but generally it's a better idea to just eyeball it so we're going to disable that and we're going to start out with a first letter of F and our second letter uh, of O because those two were causing us problems. And then we're gonna click OK. Now it's gonna open up uh, this sub table here. And you can see if we type in F here and second glyph of O, it generates a preview down here. And look, it automatically uh, kerned these. So we can just eyeball this and about there looks just fine. So you can see now we've kerned the uh, letters F and O. There we go, we just have a couple ones there, and we'll click OK and OK again. So that's the gist of kerning. It's really quite simple, just element, font info, and it's in the lookups type, and you just create a new lookup, and here we are. And actually, that teaches you most of how lookups work. We add lookups here to do special features. We wouldn't necessarily have to do kerning, we could also do a ligature, which I'm now going to go over. So for instance, F and I, uh, if we type FI, you can see it looks a little bit weird and it's not particularly attractive. So what we could do to solve that is create a ligature of it. Now, how to create a ligature is a little bit different, but still quite similar. We need a new character because a ligature is actually a entirely different glyph. So now we're going to go over to encoding and we're going to add an encoding slot. This basically just creates a blank glyph in our in our font. So we'll just click OK with the default of one, and you can see right here we now have a brand new glyph. Now, if we go into this and go into the glyph info, we're going to want to change the name from name me to five six to the first letter in our ligature underscore the last letter in our ligature. And we're going to click OK, go back into Glyph Info, and we're going to come down here to Ligatures and create a new subtable for Ligatures, Ligature Substitution, and we're going to want to set this to Liga, Standard Ligature. The uh, standard name is just fine. And then we'll have a subtable and we'll click OK. Um, now, there we go. We can just choose that subtable and click OK. And if we go back into our glyph info, you can see that because we've named it right, it automatically puts those two together into the glyph. 
So now we want to generate our brand new glyph by going into element, build, composite glyph. And then that will automatically, as you can see, combine those two uh, glyphs together into a ligature. But unfortunately we can't edit them as they are. So at first we're going to have to go here and unlink the reference by right clicking on our uh, ligature. So now if we double click here, you can see that it's fully editable and we can edit it however we wish. Um, I'm just going to do something quite simple. Delete the eye and move this box over to here, this to here, this to here, and then I'm actually going to select it all and element overlap, remove overlap. Now you can see that it's combined together to create our ligature. And then we're gonna just adjust the spacing. And then right here is the caret. If you were typing in a word processor, this is where the little blinking cursor would show up in between the letters. All right, now we have a new ligature. And if we create a new metrics window, you can see if we type FI, it automatically combines them together and changes. Now, if we deselect that ligature, you can see this is what it looked like before and now after. Now, this might not be the best ligature example ever, but you can see how that is accomplished. And um, we're just gonna show you how to do that one more time. This time, we're gonna do the FFI ligature. So we're going to go ahead and go into encoding, add encoding slot, click OK for one. Then we're going to name it. We're gonna do a three letter ligature here. So F underscore F underscore I. So the FFI ligature, then we're going to go into our glyph info once again, ligatures. We're gonna choose that subtable we have. And you can see because we named it properly, we automatically had those glyph names input. And then we're gonna to go to element, build, build composite glyph. And there you can there you can see it there. And then we're gonna unlink the reference and then we can go ahead and edit it. And there we go. And then we can adjust our spacing line again. And now we have two carrots. So we'll just drag the first one out and the second one. And there we are. Now we have FI and FFI. And if we create a new metrics window, you can see that if we type F, I, you know, I, 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 or F, F, I, see that? It automatically changes um, based off of that subtable, that lookup. Uh, with the ligature feature enabled. All right, so once again, this was a bit of a quick one. In the next tutorial, we're going to be going over um, exporting your font and repairing it uh, for use with different uh, font types. All right, hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, leave it a like. And if you're feeling especially nice, go ahead and subscribe. And with that, I will see you guys later.